<laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All okay. right. So you ready to count us down? I am. I'm gonna drink my tea real quick. Every time, never fails. She either oh. has to drink her water or pee. One of the two before we begin anything. It's my new Rocky mug. It is your new Rocky mug. Yeah, we ran up the Rocky stairs in Philly. Oh, so. nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So we had to, of course, get a mug. I got a <laughs> shirt. She got a mug. Yeah. How was it? Was it hard? It. It's I not mean, as hard as I thought it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, but it was still. But it's good. Yeah. It, like, it I got hard. to the top and I was like, oh, okay. We got to keep going. <laughs> we got to finish this. We, yeah, it was, it was real hard. I was like, you know, moving my legs and stuff, but we, we made it. If you're on your tippy toes, it's a lot easier. It was too. a lot easier on your tippy yeah. toes. Yeah. I so. would agree. Okay. All right. Guess what, guys? We're not doctors. No, we are not. If you're going to be making any major medical decisions, please consult your doctor. That includes diets, exercise, medications, and surgery. We love you guys. And we want you to continue to be in our OSLP family forever. So be careful and, and consult, consult your doctors. doctors. Guys, we all need our vitamins after surgery, regardless of what you think. Yes. It's a must. Yes. So why not choose the easiest and the best tasting in the community? Seriously, it's pro care, guys. Pro care is so delicious. I use their chewable for over a year. That's how I know. Yes. And I love their capsules. Yes. Love them. They're once a day. I take them at night. Easy peasy. And my labs are fantastic. Yeah, our labs are great. And I've actually switched to the capsules and I take those at night now. So if you guys need your iron, they have them with iron and they have them iron free. They even have calcium chews. Yes, the calcium chews. mm, Perfect. They have mocktail ones, uh, chocolate. They have also some caramel and a cinnamon roll. They're freaking delicious. So go over to ProCareNow.com and use our code OSLP to save some money. Prepping and measuring your food post-op is a beast all in itself, but Portion Perfection has actually made it super, super simple. They have bowls, plates, and even a lunch bag called the Kitten Carry where you can have all of the system ready to go. Yeah, we love carrying that thing around with Mm -hmm. us. It's so much easier to pack your lunch, your snacks, especially when you're on a road trip. That Mm -hmm. thing is a lifesaver. Yes. If you want to get these things to help your journey, just go over to portionperfection.com and use our code 15 osl pod. And again, that's 15 OSL pod. And you can also go over to our Amazon storefront to pick out any of those that you would like to use. All know how difficult post-op life can be. Yeah, it's pretty freaking hard, guys. Yes. And so a way to make it a little bit easier is by joining the tribe membership program. It has been created by a registered dietitian. She's actually the sleeve dietitian on Instagram. Her name is Jamie. And she's created this whole membership program just to support us. Yeah, like we've one, we've had her on the podcast. We love her to freaking death. And then two, like she has full experts in their field that help you. And they've had bariatric surgery, almost every one of them. Yes. And The diet, the sleep dietitian is freaking smart because she has almost a support group every single day, guys. You're going to get an email. It's going to tell you which ones are for today. And you can just sign up and hang out with people that are just like you. Mm -hmm. And I've even used the journal prompts. I'm into journaling and that was way helpful to just go somewhere that can help you and just get your mind going. Yes. So if you need this kind of support, which a lot of us do, Mm -hmm. go to her website And use our code OSLP at checkout to get your discount. Welcome back, OSLP family. Welcome, welcome. You are listening to Our Sleeve Life Podcast, and this is Kelly. This is Ma. And I am very proud of myself because we have not recorded in the studio for a month because, you know, we've been on tour. You're on tour. And so generally, I don't know what I'm doing (laughs) when we get back in here because I'm like a little crazy. Yeah. But I did it. It you did perfect. do it. You did all the things. Yeah, so correctly. I just have to point that out. So you might want to tell people what you're talking about. What, what you- did you do correctly? Oh, the beginning of the episode. <laughs> like just oh saying God. who you're we ridiculous. are and who I am. I forget who I am sometimes it's when true. we're gone for long periods it's of time. Very so true. but everything was correct. It was. And it's been a great time. We want to say thank you for everybody that came out. Yes. On the tour. Oh, oh my, my goodness. Gosh. It, it was, was amazing. So it was so fun. Gotcha. And we, I really want to give a shout out to our patrons. Mm-hmm. And if you guys don't know what that is, we have a uh, website. It's a, um, I don't know what, what 
what you would call it platform. There we go. Yes. That was the word I was looking for. So we have a platform. It is on patreon.com forward slash OSLP, where our lovely patrons uh, have a monthly amount that they give us. And then we give them special benefits, extra Correct. episodes. Um, we have a support group on Facebook, which is that, called the Benchies. The Benchies. Uh, we don't like the name Losers Bench. Mm-mm. So we decided to change it. It is the Winner's Bench. That's right. And so we finally call them our Benchies. And so many of them came out. I know. So many of them. I mean, and freaking Jack. We got Lizzie. Yes. We got Sarah. Sarah. We got Tanya. Tanya. Oh, so oh many God. people were out and they they're just incredible. It was so great to finally meet these people in person. Yes. Um, after almost three years of doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're interested in becoming a patron, just go over to that website. I just said I'll repeat it for you again. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash OSLP. Pick your tier. And become a patron of ours. Yeah, we, it's super fun. You get extra benefits. Like, all so the many. Things. And, like, in the support group, we're in that all day long. Yes, we are. So, like, we look at the thing. Sometimes we can't message back right away because we're busy. You know, we're busy. But, but the thought is there. And you guys are helping each other. That's what I love about the Vinci group. Because, literally, if something, someone's going through something, Everybody's there's someone there to, there to help. Everybody's there. Um, And it doesn't matter what. It could be non, you know, weight loss related. That's yes. what's really nice, too, is that everybody's there no matter what. Yes. So and definitely. they all created this like friendship with mm-hmm. each other that I just love. And that's one of the things that about this podcast that I absolutely adore is that we are connecting people. We yep. are bringing people together that would generally never meet. No. And they've formed these really tight bonds together. And it's because of the podcast. And I just it it gives me feelers. Oh, gives, gives me you the feelers. feelers. Yeah. Very and you all know how much I don't like emotion. So <laughs> that just shows you how much I love Every single person that listens to us. It's true. And what's pretty cool is we get to be home for like six weeks. I thought you said eight weeks. I, no count, man. You told me eight weeks. No. You, I said you said we were going to be home for eight weeks. And I was like, awesome. Two solid months. Well, I I, I took out two more weeks of that. And I think it maybe it's seven. It's somewhere in that range. Okay. Six to eight weeks. All we'll be right. home. Cal. Jeez. But we are going to go to something pretty cool, which is WLSFA. We were there last year. Yep. And it's at it's in New Orleans. It's April 21st to the 23rd. And if you don't know what that is, it's the Weight Loss Surgery Foundation of America. And so they have um, things going on, teachings, and we get to all mingle. It's I, basically like a conference. Yeah. But it's very like easy breezy yeah like i heard there's there is going to be a mardi gras night of course we're yeah, going to be like in new orleans to, so. like you have to i'm already searching for my outfit i because know you know i love a good theme you do love a good theme. <laughs> so and new orleans is amazing this the whole city is just it's one of my favorite cities i've ever been to never been. and yeah this will be mel's first time in new orleans i'm so excited to show her all the things yeah um but yeah if you want to come hang out with us and all the other really cool people that are going to be at the wlsfa mm-hmm. Go get your ticket, book your trip. I mean, this is going to be fabulous. So I, I, I cannot wait. wait. Um, but also, we also want you to go over to YouTube because we do have a YouTube. You can tell she wasn't sure. You weren't no, sure. No, I started to stumble <laughs> over my words. So I took a breath. That's so what you told I'll, me to do. I'll talk. So how about they go over to YouTube? It's on your phone. It's already preloaded. Click on the app, type in our Slay Life podcast, and then you get to watch us. Every Tuesday, there's a new episode. And then we throw things randomly out there, like lives that we've done. There's been workouts on there. There's Kelly's doing yoga. Am I allowed to so, talk now? Um, am I? I didn't, I didn't You pause. put me in the corner. You said you, <laughs> you were talked taking- about everything else. You talked about everything else. <laughs> I need something. Fine. Okay. You I'll crazy, the- crazy pants so, over there. So go over to YouTube. Yeah. She Click just wants subscribe. to say it. Hit that little Hit bell. Hit that little bell so you're notified when future videos drop because it's really fun to watch us because then you would see us bigger you like would. we just did. You and, so. and you would know that we actually have a special guest here. We that's do. Just been sitting here very quietly. Yes. Very she's been nicely. amazing. She's been amazing. While we banter. Yes. Because this is what we do. Um, but without further ado, yes. let's bring on Dr. Lydia Alexander. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Uh, thank you so much for having me today. I absolutely love listening to your banter and <laughs> uh, and appreciate uh, and appreciate the time we get to spend together. Yay. So can you tell us what it is you do? 
because you do a lot okay. of things. You do a lot of you things. You do a lot of different and things. And I want to know about all of it because it sounds so interesting. Yes. Yes. So tell all us right. everything that you do. So I am the uh, the chief medical officer for um, for Anara Health, and um, and that's a um, a medical uh, a medically supervised a multidisciplinary um, uh, uh, medical group that specializes in treating patients with obesity, treating people with obesity. Wow! Um, and uh, and I've been doing that for June twenty twenty will be three years since I since I came on in that capacity. And, uh, and I would say, I absolutely love it. It's my dream job. I feel like we're, um, we're really, you know, uh, impacting people's lives and we're doing it in a way that's patient first. So mm-hmm. I'm, pr- I'm very particularly proud of what we do and, um, and what the, um, the founder and my partner has uh, put together that I was so fortunate to, um, to join and become a part of. Um, I have about a, a dozen years experience in medical weight management as an obesity specialist oh, and, okay. Um, I originally started out uh, at Kaiser Permanente in San Francisco uh, doing this type of work, and and it is my my passion project. And I had no other place I'd, I'd rather be. And uh, and I'd say I'm trying to think when I started. I'm the president elect of the the incoming uh, president for the Obesity Medicine Association, wow. which is the largest uh, medical association, a national medical association in this space. We have about 4,500. Um, members and these are, you know, other um, uh, physicians, uh, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, and other uh, allied health professionals who um, who are focused on and dedicated to um, uh, to treating people who have obesity. Oh wow, that's intense. That's a lot of hats to wear. Yes, yes. And I kind of want to start off with the hat of you just being an obesity medicine doctor, an internal okay. obesity. Say it one more time for me. <laughs> That's a lot of words. <laughs> so I am, yeah, an obesity medicine specialist, and I'm, okay. I'm board certified in internal medicine. So that's just like general, you know, general medicine, okay. uh, like the general medicine, general adult medicine in the United States. It's kind of a weird name, internal versus like actually telling you it's for adults. But, yeah. Um, nonetheless, that's what they call it. Okay. And um, and then um, I would say pretty early on, I just realized I started out in. Um, you know, doing hospitalist medicine, which is inpatient medicine mm-hmm. at um, at Kaiser Permanente right after uh, residency, and mm-hmm. um, and I, I, I uh, and I was doing that you know originally part time. I was a little bit burnt out after uh, so much training because it's a lot of training. There's medical school and residency, and um, and I had two kids in med school, and then I had two kids in residency. Wow. So um, so I was just like crawling to the finish line when I finished that, but <laughs> um, and uh, and so was um you know, taking care of hospitalized patients, which is essentially what we learned to do in uh, for internal medicine and residency. And I would always see people who had, you know, just very end stage, you know, conditions, whether mm-hmm. they were on dialysis or they had a heart attack, um, stroke, so many different, um, you know, so many different issues. And, uh, and they could be fairly young, you know, uh, like 45, you know, 40, 50 year olds. And, and I would look around, I'd be like, but how did this happen to them? Mm-hmm. And um, and nobody really had answers for it. They just say, hey, you know, we just have to, you know, we just have to kind of like fix everything, tee them up and, you know, get them out the door. But um, I always felt very unsatisfied with that because yeah. I was like, what could we have done to make to to ha- like ha- prevent it? Have like a good, yeah, to be permanent and have a good quality mm-hmm. of life, like you know, downstream instead of just uh, just hitting up like this end in- stage stuff. So it felt a lot like I was rearranging the chairs on the Titanic every yeah. time I went to work, and it was like super interesting. And you know, yeah. like you make these big changes and you could see them, but um, it didn't feel like we were getting to the heart of things. Mm-hmm. And um, and my outpatient um, clinic doc mentor. I just, she actually came to my house one day and, uh, as I was, uh, because she just had a kid and I'd had a whole bunch of them. So I assumed that she was coming over to, to kind of, you know, check in and, you know, like, you know, swap, swap stories on that and, and get some advice. And, um, and she had said, Hey, you know, I think that you would be, uh, you know, great to join, you know, this medical weight management program at Kaiser that I'm, that I'm doing, would you like to do that? And I really liked her and I I didn't honestly know what she was talking about. And I think this also speaks to the lack of um, information and training that we Mm -hmm. receive during medical school, during residency. 
uh, around, you know, around treating weight and um, and thinking of it as a um, as a, a chronic condition and, mm-hmm. uh, and something that that should be addressed me- medically and not as a you know a lifestyle choice. And so I, I had no idea, but I liked her, and I was like, you know, I, I would really enjoy working with her, and I think she's pretty smart. So whatever she said, I'll go along with it. And uh, and so I joined, and I felt at that moment like I started to um, to interact in this world. And, uh, and it's like a light bulb went off. I thought, mm. okay, this is where I meant to be um, because it, everyone is having this issue. Like 7% of the country is having a weight issue mm-hmm. and it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense how 70% of people could be doing this wrong mm-hmm. and yeah. that it's like a personal failing or a willpower issue. Mm-hmm. Um, and that we're, you know, as a country spending $60 billion a year trying to lose weight, yeah. um, these two don't go together. How could we be that bad at this? Yeah. And, uh, and so, um, and, and so we would, you know, I, I would help these people and we'd collaborate and uh, we'd come out with, you know, health plans and you'd see all the different chronic conditions that we deal with, like the type two diabetes that gets you on dialysis mm-hmm. and, um, you know, the cholesterol issues and blood pressure issues that end up in a stroke or a heart attack. And we'd be reversing them all. And so I was like, it not, now I'm not playing whack-a-mole with every mm-hmm. single like yeah. issue and saying, hey, uh, you know, just try harder. Yeah, uh, just try harder and and come back. And uh, which, you know, that's all we really have time to do with 10 or 20 minute appointments. Um, but we'd be seeing these, you know, we'd be seeing patients on a weekly basis and um and, and impacting like long term, you know, lo- long term like uh outcomes. Mm-hmm. And so it felt a little bit like for me, the labor and delivery of of adult medicine, or it's like, yeah. Finally, I'm doing something that has impact and um and and gives, you know, gives people their life back. So um, yeah, so that's how I decided to get involved. Um, I would say to get board certified in obesity medicine and then to think about, uh, you know, like I, I sort of like bigger picture, greater good mm-hmm. involvement on a national scale and, um, and, and was asked to join the board of the obesity medicine association. And I've been doing that. I want to say it's like seven it's been a long time, like seven years oh, or so. Wow. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of, um, that was sort of my internal medicine, like a career path. And, uh, and then I got a little tired working for a big, uh, a big, like, hospital mm-hmm. entity, um, you know, Kaiser, it, it, I think is is great in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. But I think that's also like a slow moving ship. And I felt frustrated that, um, that they weren't, um, dedicating more resources mm-hmm. uh, to to treat obesity, um, that they weren't taking it seriously as a um, as a medical issue, mm-hmm. and that they weren't um, making the medications that um, that are part of treating. We call them AOMs, anti obesity medications, okay. formulary. And so it, it felt as though um, they weren't treating it the same way you treat blood pressure or depression mm-hmm. or cholesterol or anything else, where we have like the full like toolbox. Um, to, um, to do what's, what's right. And, uh, and so after, you know, trying to get all those changes to happen over several years and getting green lighted, and then, you know, suddenly, you know, it, it's like, it's on hold. Um, I, I decided to start my own thing. Nice. And, um, and while I was in the midst of doing that, I, um, I met my partner at one of the conferences and, uh, and we hit it off and we're very much in line with how we, um, how, how we view, you know, um, taking care, you know, people in this space. And I always said, like, I, if I had a magic wand and I could like have my dream job, this would be it. Oh, and wow. the way that I would design, um, a, you know, a, uh, you know, a health group that would, mm-hmm. that would, and it's a med tech startup now that would take care of, um, you know, of, of people that we serve, this would be exactly how I would do it. Wow. That's, That's- so incredible. I know. I am, oh, go ahead. I was like, I'm just so curious about the medicines. Yes, yes. Yes. I definitely want to talk about the medicines, but I also love that you guys are treating it as a disease. Mm-hmm. I know I've been through a lot of pe- of doctors that have just said, well, just you just need to lose weight. You just need to lose weight. And I'm like, mm-hmm. but how? Like, I, I don't <laughs> I don't know how to do that or I wouldn't be obese. Right. Yeah. So I love that you're treating it as a disease because that's what it is. And yeah. I think people struggle with, you know, the word you used was willpower. And it's funny yeah. that I didn't even think about that word 
being so impactful until we had done an interview. Yeah. And Ashlyn had said, willpower, it's not a matter of willpower. And I just like light bulbs went full yeah. on for me. And I was like, wait a minute, it's not willpower. It's not, no. Because I'm I'm it's not me. I'm not failing. I just don't have yeah. the right tools to figure this out. So I love that. I love that. So yeah, yeah. yeah. then we can talk about yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and it's right. There's a, you, we need the tools and then we need the, you know, the, the like medical care set up mm -hmm. in a way that's patient friendly mm -hmm. and, um, and to remove, you know, that stigma. I, I feel that obesity is where depression was or mm -hmm. addiction was, mm -hmm. um, decades ago. Yes. And so, you know, where it would be like, oh, you know, you, you, you aren't happy. Well, mm -hmm. that's your fault. You know, but if you could just smile more and get some sun and, yep. you know, be friendly, then people would be mm -hmm. friendly toward you and you'd feel happy. And, uh, and, and we know that it's, it, it's not that it's a disease. Mm -hmm. If you're, yeah, if you have major that. clinical depression, it's different than I had a bad day. I feel a little sad mm -hmm. in this moment. It's, it, it's a, it, it's a hormonal, you know, neurochemical imbalance and the same for, uh, for addiction. And so, mm -hmm. Um, you know, seeing that we're, we're doing the exact same thing again, yeah. you know, with, um, with treating obesity and that there is a lack of understanding even amongst healthcare professionals mm -hmm. that, um, that this is the case. Yeah. And, uh, and even, you know, amongst the people that we, you know, the patients that I see, um, many will come in and say, you know, I'm seeing you because I, I failed. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, no, no, you've, you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. Um, you're, you're seeing me because, it, it's not, it, it's not, it's not your fault. Your chem, you know, your hormones are, have gone crazy and they're, they're telling, they're giving you signals. Um, it's, it's your biology that's driving your behavior. And, oh. um, and so you need to, you know, you need to be aware of that mm -hmm. just like, you know, feeling depression is not your fault. Something yeah. could have thrown you over the edge, but, um, but you're here now. Wow. So it's an actual hormonal imbalance for obesity. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> well, and I mean, I had I had kind of alluded to that because I I'm actually on a GLP-1 medication. I'm on Monjaro. Okay. And okay. I took my first shot and 6 hours later, I didn't want sugar anymore. Like yeah, it's it's incredible because I'm like, "Oh, wait. It is chemical." Mm -hmm. Because if this yeah, medication didn't work, I would still be eating the same way I did before. Right. And That's I have right. to put out there like, okay, so crumble cookies. We all know they're just delicious. Like everybody <laughs> knows what crumble cookies is. And if you don't just stay away from it yes, because away. it's, they are very addicting, but they are also packed full of yeah, sugar. If, if in packed. your area, if you don't have a crumble, it's an insomnia cookie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it'll put mm -hmm. you to sleep. It, for okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I, the girls, while I was gone, so my bonus kids, they decided to go get crumble. Of course. And I get home and there's the pink, the dreaded pink box sitting on the, on the table. And I have literally not had one bite. Nice. I have opened the box twice now and not taken a bite. Old Kelly before Manjaro, I would have eaten the whole box. Yeah. Easily by myself by mm -hmm. now. And I have not touched one. That's how you morsel. know it works. Yeah. yeah. So it is a chemical imbalance. And that's it's yeah. just nuts to me that we're just figuring this out. Yeah. Well, there's a lot. Yeah, of it, 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 yeah, it, it, it seems completely nuts because, again, if you think about if 70 percent of the country is having this issue, you're spending billions of dollars mm -hmm. and you're getting like worse outcomes every year mm -hmm. and nobody wants to have it. Like yeah. nobody wants to feel this way or be mm -hmm. this way. Then maybe it's something else, you know, yeah. maybe it's not, <laughs> maybe it's not lack of effort or willpower or, mm -hmm. you know, in, in intention, mm -hmm. uh, that, that it could be something else driving the behavior. And so it feels like the elephant in the room mm -hmm. that it, it, it's such a, it, it feels like very aha and obvious. Mm -hmm. And that also, if you think about physiology, um, you know, we, the, the, the body is so, you know, like our blood pressure, how many breaths we take a minute, how much sleep we need, circadian rhythms, um, you know, every single aspect of us is hormonally regulated to the T. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, like, you know, the ships don't run on time. Yep. And so how can weight not also be that because weight is is completely central to survival. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and so it's impossible for it not to be under, you know, um, neurohormonal control. Um, otherwise, 
we, you know, we would be all over the place. And so it is, and that's why you see animals in the wild being a correct weight, um, you know, you know, being and feeling and looking as they should. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you see, um, and then you see like pathophysiology or what it looks like when things go wrong, Mm -hmm. when that, you know, when those mechanisms, those controls, um, you know, in our brain and then in our, in our gut and, and everywhere else, like our, our nervous system, um, you know, go haywire and, and what that looks like as well. So I'm guessing you do a lot of, uh, hormone blood work on your patients. What we do. Um, Okay. All right. What does that look like? As far like, what are you looking at when you do a hormone blood work panel? So, uh, so a couple, like I'd say the, the main, um, you know, the main hormones that we look at, um, and, and in my field, we check quite a lot, which, Mm -hmm. uh, in internal medicine, family practice, like primary care, um, that's not, you know, specialized in the space. It doesn't really look at it at all. Interestingly is fasting insulin. Mm -hmm. Um, and so. Yeah. So fasting insulin is, is, uh, you know, we look at hemoglobin A1C, which is like the three month marker for where your blood sugar has been at on average and fasting, you know, blood sugar, fasting glucose. Mm -hmm. But um, what's, what's underneath that is fasting insulin. So your, you know, your, um, you know, your three month marker for blood sugar could be great. Your fasting blood sugar could be great. um, But if your body's working really hard um, with a high insulin level, to keep you where you need to be, Mm -hmm. then that's sort of like that, that, that at some point is going to break. And, uh, and so, uh, so we need to be aware of that and look and see kind of what's under the hood, what's coming, Mm -hmm. um, what's coming next. And there is a a tendency um, in, in the U S to treat um, type two diabetes, once your blood sugar is out of control, Mm -hmm. like once it's nine or 10 or 11, then everybody gets excited. Um, Nobody gets particularly excited when it's, um, in the pre-diabetes range. Mm-hmm. And, um, and they should, because every year, five to 10% of those people develop type two diabetes. So mm-hmm. why are we waiting for people mm-hmm. to get these issues? And when insulin resistance happens, which 50% of the country has right now, um, wow. weight issues happen. And so we're again, just waiting for the, you know, for like the house to catch on fire and be like, call the fire department. Well, we already knew it was going to happen. Um, mm-hmm. if we didn't address it as a health issue. Yeah. It's like you going off of your house analogy. Like if you know there's a an electrical issue and you're looking at it and you're like, this is going to cause a fire, but let's close back up the wall. Yeah. Let's let's just wait wait. till that fire happens. Yeah. Yeah. We'll wait for the flames to start and then we'll fix it because that just seems logical. Well, it it seems easier that way. Yeah. It's just easier. (laughs) We don't have to do anything right away. Yeah. No. And back to that 50%. Right. Oh my God. My mouth dropped. Yeah. Yeah. So 50% of us have insulin resistance. Yeah. And that shouldn't surprise that shouldn't surprise anyone given that 70% of the country has a weight issue, like 42% mm-hmm. obesity and uh, you know, there and then another 30 something um uh, pre-obesity or overweight. And um, and so that's yeah, that, that's that's most of the country. And so the fact that half of the country is having some type of insulin resistance, not super surprising, but I love your analogy. And I'm going to like write that down and use it. We're just like, there's an electrical problem, which is really our nervous system and our hormones. And you're just like, yeah, they're not going well, but let's just wait and see. Will it happen? And it's just like, um, yeah. Yeah. Nine times out of 10. It's just a matter of time. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's crazy because people have been throwing around the, um, insulin resistance term a lot. And I yeah, guess yeah. I just don't understand. Like, what can you is explain? What insulin is insulin resistance? So insulin resistance is when. Um, so we have, you know, like uh, adipose is, you know, it like it, it, adipose cells are an organ. Like it, it's one of the largest organs of the body, and it's used to store is used to store fat, which is essentially energy for the future. Okay, and um, it, which is evolutionarily hugely beneficial. Like, you know, like 10,000 years ago, people who were doing a really good job at this are knocking out of the park. It's just that in the last hundred or so years, there's no more food scarcity, but that's kind of been like the reason that people survive or don't survive over millennia. Mm -hmm. And so if your body is really good at storing energy for future use, then you have an advantage, a survival advantage. And, um, and so that, that becomes very important. And so when you have um, in, in our present day and age, when we have, um, 
stored a lot of energy and, and it overflows from what the adipose cells can, can store, it starts to get stored in other places where it doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. And that's again, because it's almost like our computer system has a malfunction and it keeps on telling us you don't have enough. You don't have enough. Mm -hmm. You need to store some more. And so then it revs up our system and, um, you know, ghrelin, which is a hunger hormone mm -hmm. increases, makes you super hungry. Mm -hmm. The other ones are either have like, uh, uh, GLP one, either can be GLP one resistance. And so it's signaling, but the body doesn't care anymore. It just doesn't hear it. And mm -hmm. so you need it to, you know, to come at you at a different level. And it's the same with insulin. Insulin is like the key to cells and to, and to storing, uh, into storing fat or energy. But when those cells have had enough, it's like a, a train is full of people. Um, you can't get in as easily. And so then you've got to get like, a bigger person to like, you know, kind of mm -hmm. push stuff in and that's insulin. So it, it, you increase the levels of insulin in your body to try to get it back into, you know, into storage. Um, so your blood sugar is, you know, is where it should be. Then it starts to store in your liver. And so people develop fatty liver. And when that happens, that's a whole derangement and without getting uh, too, you know, uh, too in the weeds about it, then your liver starts essentially arm wrestle your pancreas. Oh, and, sure. uh, and so your pancreas is like upping the ante. It's like, more insulin and liver's <laughs> like, no, thanks. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, you know, and pushing back and then the liver also makes blood sugar, which only makes things worse. Cause there's like mm. organ confusion, let's call it. And uh, it can store around your heart. It could store in a lot of places where it shouldn't be and, um, and, and cause, and cause a lot of, uh, and cause a lot of disease. And so that's where insulin resistance happens, where the regular amount of insulin that the pancreas would be giving you and you know if all things were going well and your body wasn't malfunctioning with um with the read would be fine and uh and so now you have to keep on increasing it so it can like you know stuff things in in different spots uh oh. in you know in in the body where it's and, not uh, supposed and, to be yeah and make your blood mm -hmm. sugar level normal where it, so it's where it's not supposed to be and um and then those fluctuations make people hungry in certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, they, they have, they have a lot of, um, they have a lot of impact. I'm wow. living for this conversation. Right I know. Now. Like so, living for it. Insulin resistance. <laughs> Are we, is something happening at like a younger age to cause insulin resistance? Is it the food? Is it the environment? Is Are we it, just born that way? Like yeah. what's, going on. Yeah. So I would say it's, it's all of the, um, it's all of the above. And we know that to be the case for other disease processes. And so it is also the case for obesity and that there is a genetic predisposition where some people will be better, um, at storing weight, um, and, um, and keeping it on for a rainy day and other people won't. And, uh, and it's the same for, um, for blood pressure. Some people, uh, you know, will have high blood pressure, um, in my family, there's a predisposition for that. And so I have to really watch the salt in my diet because I could, you know, it could go up very easily. I, you know, have other friends who are, you know, like basically licking salt, you know, to keep their, you know, to, to keep their, you know, their, their, their electrolytes up. Yeah. And, um, and so it's just how we're, you know, each designed for whatever environment, um, that happens. So there's a genetic predisposition and, um, and so that's one thing. So when there, then there are different environmental stimuli, that, um, you know, that hit on, uh, that predisposition. And so there's, maybe that's a, the, you know, the, a, um, a, a difficult spot for some of us. So for blood pressure, for me, for depression, someone else, mm -hmm. and, you know, for weight, another person, then, um, then you will be impacted by it and, uh, and, and stuff will, and st stuff will start to go, go wrong, so to speak. And the way that happens is environmental stimuli, um, which can include stress. Um, it can include sleep. It can include um, all of the marketing uh, that's out there, you know, mm -hmm. to, to try to, you know, to, to try to, you know, um, uh, you know, change behavior essentially. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we're wired for it. So, uh, you know, if you put a squirrel in a room with like a box of Krispy Kreme donuts, I guarantee you that squirrel will eat way beyond what it should be eating yep. until it is sick. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's because, it's the genetic, you know, it, we're genetically programmed to do that, um, mm -hmm. for, and to, to, to feed up for a rainy day. And, um, and so when things go, when things go wrong, um, we don't get the readout that we have enough energy stores like a camel, but also when our environment is made to be like what we call obesogenic, where, you know, you're walking through the airport 
And Cinnabon smells great. I want to have it. It smells great. Yeah. Uh, And and so there's a lot of that. And and so it's sort of like overriding like our usual controls Mm -hmm. um, in, you know, in in the world. And, uh, you know, and so we have that there's um, like the programming on TV and then it's also our food supply. So there are a lot of like food like substances is what I'd like to call them that are out there. They're in the supermarkets. They've got emulsifiers in them and different additives and preservatives and um and they don't belong there like the those were never something that we were really meant to eat mm-hmm. um but they're put out there so that it increases shelf life mm-hmm. um which is better for manufacturers they're put out there because it can increase like palatability um you know there are a ton of tons of food scientists who who understand chemically what it is about sugar salt and fat and the correct combination of it that could uh that could lead somebody who has it has a a high genetic predisposition, let's say, to addictive food habits to flip the switch. And even someone who has a moderate ability at addictive food habits to flip the switch. That's why you can't just eat one Dorito. It it is (laughs) engineered so that you cannot eat one Dorito. Have you ever had that problem with a whole fresh food where you're like, I just can't eat one apple? Yeah. I, I, no. I can't stop. Not no, at all. no one's ever but said Doritos that. For sure. <laughs> Doritos Cheetos, for sure. You know, Oreos. Yeah. 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 Any of those Whoa. things. And it's never happened with grapes or anything people like that's no. even sweet. It's never, you've never been like, I ate eight mangoes and they were so sweet I couldn't stop. It doesn't happen. No. Um, wow. it, so I've never that, heard that anybody is... say I overate <laughs> on fruit. That it, I know, maybe maybe in the random support groups on Facebook. <laughs> I know. The but worst other than one. that, like when they, you know, they're like, well, you ate some strawberries. That's why you're gaining weight. Right. Um, you're like, yeah, no, no girlfriend. That is not why you're gaining weight. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not the fresh fruit. No, it, there's something else it there. It could be the processed foods that's literally telling your brain to keep eating. Oh, it's totally what I understand. Is. It, it's like hedonic, it's called hedonic signaling. So we, we have like signal. homeostasis signaling, hedonic signaling and emotional signaling. And some of these are all the same hormones and they hit across each one. Like ghrelin, um, you know, it will hit all three of these areas. So, it, you know, marketers know this. And so they throw this stuff out there and you take a bite and you're just like, I can't stop. These sons uh, and, of bitches. And, <laughs> yeah. So what's really interesting I mean, about I this, love like it, I'm flipping back to my childhood and me and Mel grew up together. So she knows exactly what I'm talking oh. about. But my mom was always a, a home cooked person. Yes. Whole we foods. never really went out to eat. Um, I think I can probably remember. Like when my mom was going to college, she would take us to McDonald's and buy, you know, when they had the bucket of fries, she would buy a bucket of fries, pour it out on the table, like on the tray, and we would play while she studied. Other than that, we never really ate fast food. We were, she didn't buy Oreos. We didn't drink soda, nothing. And so I was also like, I was always kind of a stable weight, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I got on my own, I was like, wait, I can eat fast food. And so I started eating fast food and started eating junk food. And like, I never really had it before. So it makes complete sense that as soon as I could have it, I couldn't stop because I was predisposed to have those food addictions. Mm -hmm. And it just had never been part of your environment before. So so that was that. And I would say uh, I grew up in Michigan uh, to, you know, like to Greek immigrants and we didn't go out to eat a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. We were making everything at home mm-hmm. because that's what we could afford. And uh, and so when um, when I went to college, I easily gained like the freshman, like more than 15 because it was like convenient. You yeah. know, I had to study. This was like the cheapest stuff to buy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'd buy like a pack of Snickers bars and like have them under my bed and mm-hmm. and and be eating them it, like, a, you know, and I was running track and field and I was just like, oh, I'll just burn it off. I'll eat this. I didn't understand that there was like a difference in food quality that this is a processed food versus what I was eating at home. I just Mm -hmm. saw it all as food and it was convenient. Mm -hmm. And I was just trying to like get through things and I couldn't figure out like why I was hungrier and why I was putting on weight and, uh, Mm -hmm. and, and, and what the, and what all the, yeah, what all the differences were there. Now looking back, I'm like, of course I was, I, it's, I I was eating processed food and, uh, and it just does not, um, it doesn't send the same signals to the brain and to the gut, um, uh, you know, to um, to stop or to slow down. And there's actually interesting um, like work now in the uh, around the gut microbiome that it uh, that it also signals um, 
hunger uh, when it's when it's not getting the right food. Huh. And uh, and I find that like super interesting. Yeah, where um, you know, like our gut microbiome when you're, when you're feeding it whole fresh food, it's like totally satisfied. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's eating up all that fiber and everything is great mm -hmm. when we feed it like a processed or an ultra processed food diet. And I would say for myself, I mean, it was like Snickers and Twinkies, like whatever. And I it was just not having like a very healthful uh, moment there. And, uh, and, and so the, the, um, your, your, the microbiome, like your gut bacteria, it can't digest that or eat it. It's looking for fiber and prebiotic mm -hmm. stuff. And so then it starts to actually eat at your gut lining. Um, and it's like suffocating or starving and actually starts to signal um, hunger. And it, so, uh, yeah. And so it's oh like driving, God. it's one of the things that drives our behavior. It signals hunger. And because your microbiome's like, we're dying here, get us some food. And, uh, and you're, you're giving it food, but it's empty calories it, for the, for, for, uh, for the microbiome so and empty calories for us too, because oh we're not getting the nutrients we need. So we're still super hungry. So I, your body's just saying, hi, hello, give me real food. Yeah. <laughs> And so we keep exactly. feeding it, but it's not, if we're not feeding yeah. it the correct stuff, it's going to keep, yeah. keep signaling. Cause it's totally. retrying it, it. It keeps wanting. It's retrying. It's just like, I need it. I need it. I need it. It's like, ever get that feeling? You're just like, I'm not sure what it is, but I need something. It's yeah. a routine. Um, like, what is it that I need? And it's, you know, there's some missing ingredient that doesn't generally happen in a whole, a whole fresh food diet because it, it it's things are nutritionally dense, but in processed food, it does. And then many of us, you know, like with the, you know, way back, um, you know, with like the low fat craze, so I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't want to eat like oil and all these different mm -hmm. things. So I'm going to buy fat free cookies at, at like, I wasn't in medical school yet. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so I would, you know, I was eating these things and I couldn't figure out why I didn't feel great. Uh, and, you know, and why I didn't like perform the same, you know, when I, when I ran, uh, when I ran track and, and wasn't sleeping that well, you just kind of think about it. Um, and in retrospect, it totally makes sense. But at the time, you know, I didn't know. And I think most people today still don't know because you walk into a supermarket with the expectation that you're at a supermarket that's mm -hmm. food and it's all edible mm -hmm. and it's fine to eat because yeah. it's in there. Um, but that's not, um, but, but all food isn't created equal in the sense that it's not all good for us. Well, if, and I know that consider my, anything at a supermarket. Food. Yeah. My family was so under the impression that it's like, well, they wouldn't sell it to us if it wasn't bad for us. Right. Like 100%. Same here. That's yep. exactly same here. what. Yeah. And then my, and my weight would change. I was like, okay, I'm going to buy, um, Aunt Jemima light syrup. Mm -hmm. And uh, and a friend, I remember she came. She's like, "Why are you eating this? This is crap. This is like high fructose corn syrup, and mm -hmm. you're you're eating it because it says light because yeah. it's got sucrose in it." And uh, she's like, "Maple syrup. That's Maple. that's actually really syrup." And I was like, "Yeah, but it's got calories and sugar." Um, and 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 it's just you know, and we're still kind of um, you know operating and thinking that way. Mm -hmm. And so I know that if that was my you know my knowledge base like 15 years ago, um, that it could, you know, it could be someone else's too. So if I'm understanding this correctly, so the people, like not the people, well, whoever are scientists, people for the food industry, they attack three of those hormones with the food. Well, well they attack three, yeah, sugar, salt, and fat um, in the right amounts are, are very palatable. Yeah. And it's almost like it, that's like why high fructose corn syrup is so addictive mm -hmm. because it's, it's just like it, it's sugar on steroids. It's like crack, um, for sugar. And, uh, it, and, and so your body's like, ding, 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 like the dopamine goes off all your reward, you know, it, it's like having a gambling, uh, like addiction, you know, addiction and Holy being God. in Vegas and, uh, and just being like, woo, yeah, here I am. <laughs> You know? So, and then there's a fourth thing that just isn't in our body of our stomachs going like, Hey, there's still enough fiber and protein in this. Yeah. Can you please help me out? So you're good. And I'm then we're going to make hunger. you more hungry. Yeah. And they're like, ding, 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 giving it to you. I'm um, giving it to you as well. And so it's, oh um, it's so, so there's like, so that's it. You've got predisposition oh and God. then you've got all this environmental stimuli. Mm -hmm. And then you've got manufacturers who are trying to sell the product, whether it's good for you or not. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then these products are really, they're cheaper, you know, mm -hmm. per calorie, they're, they're convenient, because they don't, like, they don't rot in your car, you know, like, yep. if you have to eat on the go, like, yep. uh, you know, all this, it, it's, it's, 
practical. And, uh, and so you start to, you know, to eat and, and, you know, and, and have part of this, then you start to get all the signaling. Um, then, you know, stress plays a part because you know, nobody wants to feel bad. And so now you experience stress there. Maybe you're not performing as well at work anymore because your energy levels off or you're, you feel foggy in your mind. And so you're just like, well, you know, I, I feel stress and stress increases another hormone called cortisol, which only increases insulin. And mm-hmm. then it's like off to the races again and becomes a vicious cycle. Oh and and then like weight gain gives you sleep apnea. Well, sleep apnea gives you weight gain. <laughs> so like, what, uh, what is going on right now? <laughs> on here, yeah. I feel like you're explaining my entire life to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we know. Seventy percent of the oh, people. My Gosh, so I have, I, okay, so (laughs) I am not one that loses the ability to speak. I know, she's speechless right now. And I am literally like, (laughs) what the fuck? I, yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Uh Like, what is going on right now? So, you have been what I've been looking for for so long, by (laughs) the way. Yes, you have no idea. How excited inside I am. (laughs) Because this is a lot of the things that I've wanted to know is like, okay, what is, how is it like when you, put the food in your body what is it really doing yes what does it do yeah yeah. yep and you literally pretty much explain that like it's wild well and you're explaining like why i did the things i did Mm -hmm. like yeah this is because your biology this is your biology was driving your behavior and then consumerism was driving your biology which was driving your behavior um and you know and then then things start to go wrong in your body because your body you know, in a certain environments is going to do just great. Mm-hmm. And then there's something that flips it and, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and injures some aspect of, you know, your system. And, um, and then that injury gets worse and worse and worse uh, over time and things and things pile up. And, and so you end up with like ghrelin increase, uh, sleep apnea increases ghrelin. And, uh, and so people are hungrier and it's, and it's generally at three in the afternoon, when you're getting really tired because you didn't sleep well, cause you have sleep apnea. And, uh, and then you're just like, Oh, I got to wake up. I got to do my job. And then you reach for a high, a high carb food because that's what your biology is telling you to do. Cause it wants you to like get energy and wake up immediately to get the job done. And then you just keep on repeating this because it becomes like psychologically your go-to strategy mm-hmm. and uh, and then you keep doing it and then of course then we beat ourselves up you're like why do i do this to myself mm-hmm. why do i keep reaching for that mm-hmm. um i you know i'm not going to do it tomorrow tomorrow's a new day and then tomorrow you do it again you're just like what is wrong with me yeah why yeah. I'm, I'm a perfectly like reasonable intelligent person and yet i keep on repeating this behavior and and you feel shame <sighs> um you feel shame for your decision And then you feel shame as a person, Mm -hmm. like I'm a bad person, not only just a bad decision. And, uh, and then if society is giving you that message too, it's easy to believe. It is because we think we're all failures. And I know when Mm -hmm. I went through this process, I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. Yeah. (laughs) I felt alone. Yeah. 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 I know. This is ridiculous. I know. I'm like looking at Mel because I'm just like, this is okay. So first off, I say, what's your question? I have so many. (laughs) I know. I have so many questions. (laughs) So I have four autoimmune diseases. Okay. At the height of my diseases is when I hit the height of my weight. Mm -hmm. Makes total sense. Yep. So and then as soon as I had weight loss surgery, I woke up. It probably got better. Yep. Totally I mean, I'm not better. like totally fine, right? Like I still have right, these things going on. Sure. Way better than I was at 275. And yep. let's go back to even six months ago. I I had gone through some regain. I regained about half of the amount that I lost. And my diseases started amping up again. Yes. Yep. And I got on G- Monjaro in, beginning of December, mm-hmm. end of de- November. And my diseases are getting better again. Yeah, because it's yeah, not getting it, all it, that sugar and shit. Yeah, and and it's an inflammatory response. Like your your um your body's getting inflamed, mm-hmm. and that's what uh you know it's either infection. Really, like all of medicine could be exa- encapsulated into infections and inflammation. And so you know infections, you know coming at you, inflammation is like your body 
um, like fighting against itself. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's, what's happening with the the different, like with the rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and all these different conditions, um, your body is attacking itself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's doing that because, um, it sees some sort of threat and, uh, and, and, and it saw that threat incorrectly, Mm -hmm. um, because something happened in the environment, um, that, that triggered that response. And, and so we, um, beyond checking insulin, we check, um, uh, this it's not a hormone, but it's a marker. It's called, um, HSCRP. So highly sensitive C reactive protein. And, uh, and it's something that we, you know, check as a standard panel and it, it's, it's called highly sensitive, which it is. Um, it, and as a result of that, it's, uh, it, it's like a very general marker of inflammation in the body. So if you got say COVID and you checked HSCRP, it would be through the roof. If okay. you, you know, whatever it is, you get a, you get a, a different virus or a different um, infection. And, but it also is elevated with all the different, um, you know, rheumatoid conditions and, and other um, autoimmune conditions. And it's also elevated with, um, uh, with obesity. So because our, our, our fat cells are becoming inflamed, uh, mm-hmm. because we're trying, to, the body is just trying again to like push stuff where it doesn't belong. Mm-hmm. And this cell is getting bigger and bigger and bigger because it's storing energy. And at some point it's blood supply within that cell, it's mitochondria. It's a cell. Uh, it, it, it can't, um, it can't take care of that much. Mm-hmm. And so then it starts to go, you know, like it, it, it starts to die. Um, it gives out, you know, uh, like signals, you know, the body comes in and tries to, you know, to like get rid of that cell, mm-hmm. you know, like, like the, 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 um, the immune system and tries to eat it. You get inflammation. There's all sorts of things that are happening there. And it's this like cascade of effect because we're, you know, we got inflammation, in our hypothalamus, which controls weight. And then all these things happen. And now the cells are going haywire and, uh, and they're becoming inflamed too. So when you check HSCRP, you know, uh, and then treat weight, um, a lot of these other, it's not, it's, it's not uncommon at all to see, um, you know, RA and a lot of those other conditions get better when you change the environment. And, um, and then part of that is also like our food supply. Uh, because a lot of these different, um, like it was just in the news that one of the, um, uh, like non sugar sweeteners, like the zero calorie, like erythritol, um, has been linked to heart attacks. And, uh, and so a lot of those are the the non-nutritive sweeteners. They're, they're man-made substances. And Mm -hmm. so you have to wonder at some point, um, what, what is that actually doing, you know, doing to, to your body? So, um, there, and there are additives everywhere. Like one of, um, there's actually, um, and I tell this to my patients, I should probably like blog it or something, the, um, fiber. So we're all totally told, you know, get lots of fiber, right. um, which is great for our microbiome mm-hmm. and absolutely you should. And so psyllium husk is one of those, you know, like you could buy psyllium husk, metamucil, you know, okay. supplements. So, um, if you buy like the orange stuff, it's got, you know, uh, red nail dyes in it and, and some emulsifiers that mixes up in your drink. Um, if you buy the Costco brand CVS or Walgreens, um, it has another additive in it called PS80, polysorbate 80. And, um, and which is not psyllium husk, but it's something added in there to some sort of filler. And, um, and those are definitely like the cheaper fibers to buy if you're trying to buy psyllium husk and in animal studies and in mice studies, it's been shown to cause weight gain. Uh, and and it's, it's zero calorie. It's not, you know, just like a non-nutritive sweetener. It's not the calories. It's doing something to the way our digestive system sees or does things or the microbiome, um, that causes weight gain in those animals. And, uh, and so, you know, like we just have to read these labels and figure out like what is being put in there to make, you know, to, um, to make money. And is that in the um, crystal light? (laughs) Um, you know, I don't think it's in crystal light. There are other things in in crystal light and I'd have to check. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, but, but it is like one of those, like, I will just buy the more expensive Metamucil if I need psyllium husk or go to a store that has you know, like loose metamucil, you know, like psyllium husk and, and sprinkle it on my cereal or whatever. Cause I don't want, I, I don't want to introduce something that is going to give me a, a different health issue. Yeah. Uh, so, cause I, he- I remember talking, we talked to a nutritionist once mm-hmm. about, um, crystal, light. crystal light because of the artificial sweetener in it. Yeah. Yeah. And so which is the, what is the artificial sweetener that's causing problems? 
Um, it's um, erythritol, erythritol and, um, and there, you know, and there, and, you know, and, and there are other, you know, other ones like, you know, a stevia that are thought to, to be safe, but I will say that um, also a lot of them are, are super sweet tasting, yeah. you know, cause they're like hundreds of times sweeter than natural sugar. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so, um, you know, there are some people that I've noticed, and this is, you know, a- anecdotal. And so this, this will, I guess it has to go under personal opinion, unless I can pull up an evidence-based study on it. Um, and, uh, you know, as an internist, but the, uh, but I do have some people who will, um, they'll be uh, drinking diet drinks and, um, and they, um, and they hit when, when they describe it, what sounds like low blood sugar. And, um, and it seems that the reason is that your, your tongue and, you know, your senses get that sugar taste. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then it, um, and then it, it, it tells the pancreas to release insulin. Cause they're just like, there's a big bolus of sugar coming through. Let's get the insulin like going. Ready. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can keep, yeah, let's get ready. So your blood sugar can stay normal in your bloodstream, but then no sugar comes. Cause it's just the taste. It doesn't have the actual calories. And, uh, and, uh, and so then you feel like this little low because in some people, not all people, um, more insulin is fired. And then you hit like this, the sugar low because your insulin has now reduced your blood sugar and that just makes you hungrier. Um, and, and so that is, you know, I do see, and it makes you feel crummy too, because mm-hmm. you're like a suddenly out of low blood sugar. Uh, so that, um, you know, that's another aspect of we're putting something in and there's a, a cause and an effect and, and, um, and it may not be the one that is like that we, we, and, we were hoping for. Right. So it's actually, I don't want to say better, but it's actually beneficial to eat a real, like a real cookie or something like that, because then you're not getting that. Like, I mean, you're still going to get a little bit of a crash if I, but not as much. You're talking yeah, like a I homemade would say, cookie, like yeah, straight up. Yeah. yeah. Like straight uh, up. Like, like no fake. Yeah. I would say, yeah, I'd say if, uh, for of all the different, you know, sugars to go for, you know, if you're making something at home, go for maple syrup or honey because they're not processed at all. Like maple syrup just came straight out of a tree mm-hmm. and honey, the bees just made it and that's it. And granulated sugar, there's a process, yeah. um, but it's not, it's often not as extreme as a process as say, um, you know, say something else. Wow. And, um, and, and, and it would just be better to, to have like quality over, over quantity. Okay. Um, and, and just, you know, if you're going to have it, enjoy it and have it be like the real, the real thing. And, uh, and then, wow. and, and, and move on. <laughs> I feel like I've always grown up thinking that like, oh, if it says zero sugar or light mm-hmm. or fat free, like that's the better option. So right? we were told. And now yeah. we're finding like, no, that's not accurate like Mm-mm. if you're gonna have it have it because your body's gonna respond to diff- differently than if you have the fake stuff so yeah and, and and to be clear not everyone's body will respond that way mm-hmm. i see it in a minority of people but i do see it um mm-hmm. that you know there'll be zero sugar like sodas and and whatnot and then it'll feel well i'll be like hey how about we it, it, try cutting that out for a few days and let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and, and then they'll feel fine. These are people who are, you know, trying to actively lose, um, lose weight mm-hmm. and they're feeling off. And then they're like, I'm hungry and I can't, you know, keep, I, I can't do what I'm supposed to do. And then we'll cut out the diet beverages and, um, and they'll, and they'll feel better. And it's a, it's a, it's a minority of people. And again, mm-hmm. it's genetics. Like some people are sensitive, I think to the, you know, to the, um, to the sweet, uh, response and it triggers it triggers all the right mechanisms in the body without the actual sh- without the actual sugar that needs to be disposed of and then that causes a problem um, and 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 for you know some you know I'm certain that some non nutritive sweeteners are going to be shown to be perfectly fine mm-hmm. um, but again there you know if something is very processed or entirely chemically made um, it, it it is what it is what it is and and we know. Um, you know, that, that, um, maple syrup and honey, we, we know what's going to happen predictably. And, um, and we also know that it's, you know, it doesn't, um, you know, in, in, uh, in, in balance in a balanced diet cause, you know, cause, uh, cause, cause disease or cause excess heart attacks because of what it is. It's, it's, it's a, it's a whole fresh food. So and the same for sweetness and proof and, and that's nature's dessert. Yeah, so, uh, definitely. Yeah. 
So that would make sense of like, so somebody has bariatric surgery, they're on a very high protein diet, which is a whole mm-hmm. food, mm-hmm. a nutrient dense mm-hmm. food for a yeah. quite a while. Yeah. And y- if you are bringing in carbs, you know, you're you're bringing in the good kind of carbs and you're yep. you're taught to be um, a more nutrient dense diet. So it makes sense that we do better. Yeah. That than before, because not only are we eating whole foods, mm-hmm. but we had surgery. So we're eating less of it. Well, and also. the ghrelin's right. going for us, too. And the ghrelin. Yeah, because you had like, yes, bariatric surgery is a metabolic surgery. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's it's essentially, uh, you know, you're 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 changing parts of especially like sleep gastrectomy, but all Mm -hmm. of it, you're you're uh, you're changing parts of the GI tract and the different hormone signaling that happens in there. And that's why GLP ones are effective. That's why sleep gastrectomy is effective Mm -hmm. and other metabolic and it's, it's all metabolic surgery um, is, is what I refer to it as. And GIP. So Manjaro is two hormones Mm -hmm. rolled into one. Yes. And, uh, and it, and it's effective because those are two hormones that people may be either deficient or resistant in uh, resistant to. And then when you have the, um, the bariatric surgery, it, it's pretty immediate that people's blood sugars normalize Mm -hmm. and all those things happen. So you can't say it's the weight. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's, 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 uh, it's actually all the, the metabolic changes that happen because, um, b- because of what, um, you know, because of the signaling that's changed okay. well, to and the brain. We pretty much do you have like, you had a basic sugar detox. I did. You I did, did like a two week liver shrinking diet. Yeah, I did. And that. Yeah. it makes sense why you felt better and mm-hmm. the inflammation was going down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, totally. So the other question I have, and I'm going to be kind of controversial for a second Ooh, because sure. GLP ones are controversial right now. They're, yes. they're in the media. There is stigmas that people are just rolling around, you mm-hmm. know, thinking that we're stealing medication from diabetics. And, you know, I, I just find it very interesting. The fact that 50% of us are insulin resistant. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I didn't know I was, but I'm taking yeah. the medication and everything is aligning to say I have is insulin resistance. But I get messages from people saying you're stealing medication from the diabetics. You're stealing medic, you know, like I actually have insulin resistance. So you're taking the medication from me. So in in reality, though, I'm not taking it from anybody because I myself need it for mm-hmm. the same thing they're accusing me of stealing it from. Right. Like I'm, I'm getting yes. that correct. OK. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 uh, uh, weight is a is a hormonal imbalance. It's a neuroendocrine issue. And uh, and it requires, you know, management in, in all the different ways that we mentioned, you know, like whole fresh foods, um, you know, uh, movement, mm-hmm. physical activity, um, which we would, you know, tell you know, it, like anybody to do for certain, you know, for certain things, um, behavioral modification, because our environment is, um, is driving our behavior, um, through our biology. And so then you, it, once you're aware of that, then you could sort of create like, like the, you know, like the, the distance between like impulse and stimuli mm-hmm. where you can be like, okay, I know that. And, and actually this hormone replacement is what it is. That's what it does. It's creating, it, it's creating that like that distance so that everything is not reflexive because your body is telling you to do something and you suddenly do it. And then you have like 2020 hindsight and wish you hadn't, Mm -hmm. um, but it's creating, it's, it's slowing things down. So you could be like, no, I don't, you know, I, I, I I have awareness and it allows us to modify our behavior back to what, you know, what would be, you know, optimal for us. It's like factory reset. Mm-hmm. It's like factory reset. Yeah. We're just like, okay, it slowed things down because, mm-hmm. you know, my body is like, boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. It, it's working off of like the world has scarcity and I got to get in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and now it's like slowing it down. You're like, no, that's not true. Now I'm going to manage my, you know, my response, you know, to these stimuli in, uh, because I have time to, to think it over. Um, well, it's like the matrix, like yeah. you see like the bullets coming and it's like slower and you can be like, okay, now I can react properly to it. <laughs> yes, And, um, that. and that's what these medications are doing. Um, and so, uh, everyone, everyone who, uh, has an FDA approved reason to be on them, mm-hmm. um, and, 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 and would like to be on them should 
should be on them uh, right. because they improve they improve quality of life mm-hmm. um, and they extend life and uh, and they um, and they reverse a lot of the other different conditions that happen um, because this hormone system becomes deranged. What's interesting to me is that it's it's not FDA cleared for weight loss yet. And I say yet because I th- I think it will be. It's it's being fast tracked and it will be by most likely by the summer. Yes. Um, so it's just a matter of time. Yeah, yes. And I will those, cheer yeah. as soon as that yeah. happens, because then people have nothing to say. Because it will be FDA. Well, they'll they'll still they'll They'll still say say it. And again, it's it's like waiting for the you know the you know there's an electrical issue. Yeah. Said and then you're just waiting. You're just like, well, yeah. It's um. Let's just wait for the house to catch on fire. Mm -hmm. And so you know, for this person to develop type two diabetes, Mm -hmm. and then and then we'll treat them. And at that point, there's already a lot of other stuff that's gone wrong Mm -hmm. in in the body that you may or may not be able to um, to reverse. Mm -hmm. And we do know that. nearly 90% of people with type two diabetes have a weight issue. Yeah. And we know that about 30%. So one in three people who have obesity or pre obesity, um, uh, have, have, uh, have type two diabetes. So wow. there, there's a lot of interrelation between those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, and so it makes sense. That's why it makes sense that semaglutide as Wagovi or semaglutide as Ozempic, two different things that it does, but it's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's managing blood sugar and it's managing weight um, because those two go together. Well, and what's crazy to me is that like you you originally go on it for weight loss because you're like, I just can't get it, but it's actually normalizing your whole system. That's right. And and that's why it's improving your autoimmune conditions. It's doing all that. Like we think of it as a number on the scale, but it's not just that it's how you feel. Um, and yeah, and, 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 uh, uh, depression is, uh, you know, is, is a larger percentage of people who have weight issues also have depression. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, it's because there are more hormonal, you know, dysregulations going Mm -hmm. on. There's inflammation, inflammation, you know, causes, you know, mood changes and mood disorders. Um, we know that when serotonin is, um, is low, that in serotonin, you know, that's like SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, so like the Prozacs and all this sort of thing. Okay. Um, those are replacing um, your serotonin or at least keeping it in like in certain spots longer. So your body, like, you know, it fires for your body and, and, uh, and, and has you feeling better. So serotonin, um, when, uh, when serotonin is high, uh, in the sense that like, it's this feel good hormone. Mm-hmm. And when serotonin mm-hmm. is high, um, actually hunger is low. And so, um, so, so, uh, so elevated serotonin, um, it makes you less hungry and the reverse is true as well. So, yeah. So all this stuff is related. It's not just like, Oh, I just solved the number on the scale, but nothing else is related. Yeah. It's all related. It's all, um, it's related. all related. And so, uh, and so that's, I, I, I would say for me, a frustration, mm-hmm. um, in the medical community and, you know, at large in, in terms of what we hear in media and so mm-hmm. forth, it, it's, it's all related. What, and, um, it was interesting. Cause I, I literally got home and then, um, obviously we got home late. So I went to bed. Well, the next day my boyfriend comes home and he's like, yeah, so I watched this thing. It was, uh, a 2020 news article all about Manjaro. And I was like, oh, what they say? And he's all, well, that you're stealing it from diabetic <laughs> patients. And I was like, Zach, you know, that's not true. Well, like, but he was like, but it was on 2020. And I'm like, oh, my God, can we please it's get ridiculous. on the news like with correct information? Because I'm like, I have been on it since the end of November. He has seen me go like from a very low mental state, a very low body image. Like I was very low. To where I am now, where my mindset's better, I'm eating whole foods, I'm doing the things that I need to be doing, my autoimmune issues are getting better. So it's like, it can't just be just the weight loss. It just can't be because there's all these different things. And as you're talking, I'm even thinking I'm connecting more things. I'm sure. Yeah, your body is in balance now and you're feeling better overall. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't say that... um, you know, like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, um, you know, all, all these different autoimmune, you know, system disorders, like mm-hmm. your, 
you know, if you're taking one drug for lupus, you're like leaving out the rheumatoid arthritis people. It, it, yeah. it, no, it doesn't. It, it, everyone, it, it, this medication, it's a good medication mm-hmm. that um, that is literally treating the roots, not the fruits of um, of weight issues. And uh, and so that yeah, it's treating the roots, not the fruits of obesity. And uh, instead of playing whack a mole with each one, where if you weren't on Manjaro, you'd probably be on a lot of other medications mm-hmm. um, to treat um, to treat your autoimmune issues. The, mm-hmm. you know, and you said you have four of them. Yes. Uh, so you'd be on all those, and then you'd have all these inflammatory responses. Then you'd feel um, your mood was off. Then they'd give you. An antidepressant, yeah, a mood stabilizer to deal with that, Mm -hmm. and uh, and you know, and then it's off to the races uh, for sleep, and then sleep aids, and then you know, CPAP, and and so no, that's you know, that's that's like waiting again for the house to catch on fire, and you're like, you've you know, you've got type two diabetes now, now you get it, Um, yeah, you get it, yep, you know, so yeah, because question about um GLP ones. So I'm going to I want to go on the other side of this a little bit where can you one explain exactly what a GLP one and then like Winjaro and Ozempic cuz that's the yeah, other one. Wagovi. And then Wagovi? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> space. She's like, what? There's three. Yes, there's there's three <laughs> big ones right now. Ozempic, Wagovi, and Manjaro. Okay. Yeah. So only concern that I've had is like on a cellular level. Yes. And what it does to your cells for long periods because they're upping the dose every what week or two? Month. Every month. So um it's it increases, increases. And so I'm just wondering. Yeah. Was there, is that not okay? What are, what's going on exactly? Sure, sure. Well, all of this, so the GLP ones, um, it, it's an entire receptor agonist, it's an entire um, area of, you know, group of medications that have been around for like 20 years. There's like Bieta, Trulicity, all these that have been around for type 2 diabetes for a long time, all same class of medication, except these are um, more effective uh, mm-hmm. because, and, and they're easier to dose and, and what have you. Um, and then they've been FDA approved for weight now, at least what Gobi has, mm-hmm. which is semaglutide, which is Ozempic. It's just two different labels, same thing. And, um, and then, uh, and so what all these are is they're all hormones, you know, so we're, it's a hormone analog. And so we're replacing a hormone um, that is either deficient or if there's some type of resistance. And so we're replacing it uh, to, to have the same effect in the body um, that, that, should have been there, you know, in the first place before things went wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and GIP is the same thing, uh, in, not the same as a GLP one, but it's the same idea. It's a hormone, a gut hormone um, that uh, that Im- that improves satiety. And so, um, so in terms of how you know these these work, they um, they slow down uh, like how food moves through your um, through your intestinal system. Okay. And, um, and, and, and they also increase satiety and they send signals to your brain to, to, you know, feel that satiety and signals to your gut to, you know, to slow down the movement of the food. And, um, and as a result of that, in, uh, in some people, they can cause the side effects of nausea, like constipation, because things are slowing down and there's more fluid, you know, like your water's getting, you know, absorbed back into the body. So you get constipated and, um, and also we're used to eating very quickly because it's, mm-hmm. it's the U S like we're always in a hurry. We're multitasking. And, uh, and so you eat all this food, but it takes your body 20 minutes to get that, you know, I'm, I'm full feeling. And so if you overshoot it in those first 20 minutes, cause you're eating quickly, then, uh, you know, once your body gets the fullness thing and there's like the stretch receptors and what have you, that's people can feel really nauseated. And, um, and so the, um, and so with these hormones, hormone replacements, uh, like, Wagobi and Ozempic and Manjaro, there um, we know that that's going to be an effect uh, because it's giving you the fullness signals. And to keep people from having side effects, you need to slowly, you know, increase it. And I think a, a, a best sort of um, like example that to, to in terms of how to view or think about um, increasing it and the cellular effects it has is with blood pressure medications. So if somebody had a blood pressure issue, you would start with a low dose of blood pressure medication and you check in and be like, where's your blood pressure now? It's, you know, it was 150. Now it's 135. Well, it's pretty good, but we want it to be 120. So let's increase the medication again until we get where we want to get. And that now you have a good blood pressure, which means that your heart isn't working too hard and 
you're less predisposed to have a heart attack or a stroke and all these good things happen when we keep you regulated there. And the same happens with these, uh, with these GLP ones and with GLP plus GIPs is that it's getting you to a certain spot. Um, and then, you know, and then weight, you know, then weight will stay where it's supposed to stay like a blood pressure medication. You're like, but do we need more? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we'll do it. We'll do it again. And we generally know that they are, um, they are, like the starter doses sort of help you with, for most people, some people react great, you know, like can lose a ton of weight on 0.25 of a Zempic, but not mm-hmm. most people. And, um, and so it helps you get through the side effects, which go away over time. Okay. And, um, and it also is, is, you know, you amp it up because you're trying to get a different response. Like at some point you hit a plateau, like you would with blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Are you where you need to be? Well, if somebody's starting out at a 200 blood pressure and they need to get to 120, they're going to need more. Um, and, okay. and so that, that's just, that's just how it goes. And these medications are the same, um, in terms of, um, I think what you were asking is like, what are the long-term effects mm-hmm. of, of the medications? Is it hurting me in some way? And, you know, I guess on some level, theoretically, like we don't know, and we can't say, uh, because they've been around for, you know, 20 years, uh, and, and not a ton of people are taking them to begin with. Um, now that they're FDA approved for weight, and there's a significant portion of the population that qualifies for it, assuming they can get insurance coverage, um, we have a lot more people on the medications. And so 20 years from now, 40 years from now, like what will be the outcome that they were on this medication? We can't know because no studies have been done and we're not going to wait 40 years to get them mm-hmm. because we know that that's making people's lives better in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time, we could say, um, logically speaking, that it's a hormone, uh, it's already in the body, we already need it, it's either resistant or deficient, and we're replacing it. And so this is really not any different than when someone has a thyroid issue, and you're nice. replacing their thyroid hormone, okay. um, or when somebody has a serotonin issue, and you're giving them an SSRI to improve their quality of life. And then some people stay on it for three or four years, and then they wean off of it, and they're fine. And some people need it for the rest of their lives, so that they can have a good quality of life. And so that's how I kind of see these medications, we do have some long, long term studies that you know, for over like, several years, um, and and they appear to be highly safe. And uh, especially in comparison to a lot of the other options that are Mm -hmm. out there. Um, And, um, and then they're also decreasing all the other different chronic conditions that kill people. Um, yes. So we, so we know that that's good. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, like, you know, you don't, you don't need to do a long range study for that. You're like, your blood pressure is better. Your cholesterol is better. Mm-hmm. All the studies have been done for those. We know that's good for you. Yeah. You know, your sleep apnea is better. We know that's good for you. And, um, and then there have been these, uh, these trials called step trials. And I believe it was step five um, that looked at um, and, and I do think like weight loss medications do get a bad rap because there are some that, you know, were put on the market, um, they cause, uh, they, they, they hurt people, and then they were taken off the market. So mm-hmm. people do have like a stigma toward that, and they're, you know, nervous about them. So there is a little bit of a bias there. Um, and so what started happening in medicine is then for something to be FDA approved, you would have to check and make sure it wasn't going to have an adverse outcome. Okay. And, um, and that's called in, and it's usually cardiovascular because, um, uh, Ramanaban, which is like a, a medication from a long time ago, you know, it had some heart, you know, it had a heart issue, uh, you know, the Fen-Fen heart okay. valve issues. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so the FDA said, well, you need to do studies that show that there aren't going to be what we call MACE, um, major adverse, um, cardiac events. Oh. And if you can show that this isn't going to hurt you. Um, you know, over some period of time, these different clinical trials, then that's good. And so the GLP ones have actually shown not only that they they don't hurt you, but uh, remarkably, um, they have shown that um, that in somebody who already has pre existing um, cardiovascular disease, they actually help you. So um, so not only was there like a, a a neutral MACE outcome, so no adverse cardiac events, major ones, um, but there was also an improvement. So people on these medications had fewer major adverse cardiovascular events, so they were better off. Um, and so that's why these medications in type two diabetes are now being preferred over insulin, um, are being preferred, you know, over other um, medication therapy uh, because they decrease MACE. Wow. 
holy crap. This is like the episode that I have been waiting for <laughs> and didn't, us. didn't know that yeah. we needed. We definitely needed something like this because I think yes. there's so much misinformation out there of what so much one of just what sugar, salts mm-hmm. and fats do to you, mm-hmm. what processed foods do to you. And then now with the drugs that are actually helping people, not well, and have the biology. Yeah. Like it's and not, your biology, it's not yeah. our fault. It's not our fault no. that we are overweight, that we're obese, that we're having, you know, addiction issues when it comes to food. It's not our freaking fault. And I yeah. needed to yeah. hear that. Yes. Yes. It's not our fault. Yeah, we all need to hear that. And we need we need to hear it over and over mm-hmm. again. It's not, you know, nobody gets mad at you when your blood pressure doesn't, you know, doesn't cooperate. Yeah. Like no one's getting mad at me when my blood pressure is up. They're like, your blood pressure is up. And yep. I and then I have to, you know, you know, do measures. You know, I, I run, I eat a low salt diet, mm-hmm. but my genetics are my genetics. And I do worry that, you know, when I'm older, that I'll I'll have that issue, mm-hmm. even though I'm trying very hard not to have it. Mm-hmm. And the same is true for weight. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> nobody blames me for getting autoimmune no. diseases. No, no one has ever gotten mad at you for that, I bet. And no, just like, most how, people you know, are how like, how could you do this oh. to yourself? Yeah, right. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah, I didn't ask for this and I didn't <laughs> ask to be obese and I didn't ask for a food addiction issue. Yeah. But I mean, when you think of it, like uh, like obesity with inflammation, it, it's on some level, it's like an autoimmune condition. Your body is malfunctioning, um, like, right? It, it's a computer malfunction. Yep. Yep. And we're just doing a factory reset. Yes. And we're (laughs) good because as of yesterday, I officially lost 27 pounds. Ooh, look at it. Okay. Nice. So my body, like the weight is a great side effect. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it's like, I am a different person. You're more um, focused. I'm definitely more focused. She is in better moods Mm -hmm. and she is sleeping somewhat better. Yeah. For the most part, I am sleeping way better than I was. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's huge. Which again, makes total sense because obesity is multifactorial. So not everyone gets there in the same way. And for you, you know, there's like an aspect of this is autoimmune and all this, you know, all of it's related. The weight is not separate from your autoimmune issue. Yeah. And, um, and then, so there's the neuroendocrine, like all the hormonal misfiring, but then there's the physical forces, you know? Mm-hmm. So when, you know, you're carrying extra, you know, load, that's where sleep, sleep apnea happens, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's something pushing down on you, and it's affecting the way that you breathe. And when we walk carrying an extra, you know, load, our joints start to get achy. Yep. Um, and, you know, and a whole bunch of other things happen because of the physical stress of, yep. you know, of carrying the weight. And, um, and then it's also a, a mental health issue, because we know, that um that there's there's psychosocial aspects of it too that affect us and it can be from the inflammation that you know that exacerbates mental health Mm -hmm. it can also be it it, and it also is from the stigma in society uh you know to walk around and to to have people feel that they can comment on you Mm -hmm. at will they can uh treat you differently or poorly Mm -hmm. and um and that um and you should have to then put up with it because you know you're at fault Mm -hmm. Uh, and so this creates a lot of stress um, and, uh, and, and, and a lot of, uh, you know, like, n- you know, negative, you know, negative forces on, on the body stress increases cortisol and it goes off again. And so all of that is, uh, related mental health is very intricately related, um, to weight issues as well. <sighs> I think this is my favorite episode. We've I ever know. Done. I think we're going to be really excited. I'm glad <laughs> because that it explained we had this. It's so, so much, much to yeah, us. It's not in a vacuum. Yeah. Your weight is not like just the number it, mm-hmm. it, it's yeah that is that is the least of it um in in a lot of ways wow right? i just can't yeah so can you kind of go over what does um the obesity medical association do like sure. what are they trying to do for um this community you read my mind yeah so we're trying to do a number of different things uh one of them is that we are the um the leading clinical educators in obesity mm-hmm. and so what we do is um, we have um, courses throughout the year, um, two major conferences that um, that uh, all medical you know providers, professionals can attend, mm-hmm. um, where we teach them about obesity, and we have like preeminent speakers come and talk and um, and sort of you know educate uh, people who are interested in, co- in in coming into obesity and becoming obesity medicine specialists, but also of people who would just like to hear more because they're seeing a lot of people with obesity and would like to treat their pop you know those patients. Uh, in an evidence-based way. So we have like a lot of um, GI docs who are coming because mm-hmm. of fatty liver. 
And um, a lot of cardiologists were coming because, you know, because it affects what they do too. It's a metabolic disease. So we, um, so we teach, um, we also have uh, what we, we call the treat and refer um, campaign. And so that is, you know, teaching, uh, p- you know, uh, primary care uh, people, physicians and providers in general um, that, you know, it, that you to identify that somebody has, you know, this chronic condition. And if you don't have the, the, the specialty uh, special specialties or all the, you know, different multidisciplinary, you know, levers at your, you know, at your disposal to help them, then refer them to somebody who can do that. Um, just like if you are out of your, um, you know, comfort zone with uh, a patient who has a heart issue, Mm -hmm. you send them to cardiology. If you have an issue with somebody who has some, you know, thyroid issue, and it's out of your area of expertise, you don't know what to do next, you send it to endo. And it's the same with, uh, with obesity. So it's the treat and refer campaign. And, um, and so we hope that that will help people get more specialized care. Um, we also are doing collaborations with ASMBS, so like the surgical, you know, side of things too, um, because I think it's important. Uh, again, I think there's a stigma uh, around mm-hmm. surgery and uh, very few people actually are getting surgery. They're only like mm-hmm. 200,000 surgeries a year, mm-hmm. which when you consider they're like billions, I mean, not billions, millions of people with the, with yeah. the issue is it feels small. Yeah. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and it shouldn't be because it's a metabolic surgery. So, and all of this can work, work hand in hand. So we, um, you know, collaborate with the other societies. Um, we, uh, we train, uh, medical providers and, um, and then we have an advocacy, uh, area. So we, um, we, we, uh, collaborate with OAC, the obesity action mm-hmm. coalition, um, you know, to sort of get the word out to you. Um, we all together as part of this, you know, consortium, I guess is what we would call it. Um, you know, do have, uh, somebody who advocates for obesity on, um, you know, on Capitol Hill and is trying to get Medicare, um, to cover, um, anti-obesity medications and to reimburse, uh, you know, reimburse people who see, uh, patients with obesity right now, the reimbursement, if I code for obesity, I don't get a very large reimbursement back, which, you know, which is what? unfair for everyone, uh, because it, How you is know, that a it, thing? it's, it's, yeah, it's, it, it is a thing. And, uh, and it is, it, it is completely mind blowing that, um, if, if I say I treated somebody with obesity insurance will reimburse me less than if I say I treated that person who has obesity because of their blood pressure. And, uh, and so the incentives are not there. And, uh, and so we're, you know, advocating for that. I would say living in California, I feel very fortunate because, um, the, the, um, Medi-Cal, so the, you know, like the Medicare, the state medical version of that Medicare version and to the beginning of 2022 started covering all anti-obesity medications with no prior authorization needed. Yes. This is like, 40, 40 million people were the size of a country yeah. and a very large country, in fact, and uh, by European standards. And uh, and so we're the largest state in, in our country. And um, and so Medi-Cal covers with no prior authorization needed any anti-obesity medication that a physician prescribes, um, it, you know, for to, to, to treat a patient. And, um, and that, that is such a big win yeah. Uh, yeah. because it, um, it allows us to treat, um, to treat people who can't afford $1,300 a month, yeah. um, to, to save their lives. And, uh, and so this, there are all these obstacles where physicians don't get, and medical providers in general, MPPAs as well, don't get reimbursed properly. Um, insurance doesn't want to cover the medications that, uh, that improve, uh, that improve these conditions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so everyone's, and no, and people who need them can't afford them. And, uh, and so that's what we Mm -hmm. do as part of the, the OMA. And, uh, and then as part of the work that I do as, as chief medical officer, it's modeling what, uh, what the sort of having uh, a multidisciplinary ecosystem Mm -hmm. looks like when somebody comes to see us, they see me once a month. Um, so it's not like once in six months and, you know, see me in two years again. And, um, and we have a lot of, um, you know, psychological, uh, you know, uh, like group medical visits that happen. So, um, we do have a, a course that our clinical psychologist who has 20 years of training, um, in this space, uh, co-teaches it's, uh, um, binge eating disorder. And so it helps people manage that coping with stress and anxiety and how it impacts your weight. Um, mindful eating and practice. And so we do a lot of psychological, um, you know, obesity uh, counseling. 
And then we have the nutrition component and then the, um, the physical activity component. And it's all in one, you know, ecosystem. We all talk to each other and we all figure out like, what's the, you know, what's the precision medicine approach for this individual, you know, this individual needs surgery. Um, this individual is recovering from surgery. Um, this, you know, this person uh, has more, you know, has more of a, an addictive, uh, a, an addictive aspect because they have night eating syndrome. So let's address mm-hmm. that. Um, and, and the hormones that are affecting, you know, they're driving that behavior. This person has more of a stress issue. But, so let's work on that. And, um, and so, you know, that's how kind of we like, unravel, you know, like each, you know, each way that you got to, to where you are and get you healthier. And so I would say between like the national stage of, uh, of what the OMA does to mm-hmm. advocate for, um, in, to advocate for obesity, um, treatment and training, and then kind of like modeling what that could look like in a medical practice. Mm-hmm. And then we're a med tech startup. So then we license our, um, our platform out to, to, um, to medical groups and cardiology mm-hmm. clinics so that they can treat um, uh, treat their patients without having to set this all up, because what happens is it's really expensive mm-hmm. for people, you know, for people to for groups, medical groups to do this, and so they don't do it, and that's why they give you the advice like that is of no use. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. lose twenty pounds, move more. Cool, yeah. move yeah. more. Yeah. 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 yeah, that hadn't occurred to me. I, yeah. I just you know had no clue that that's what I had to do. (laughs) Oh, wow. That is incredible. Seriously. And how is the MOA going to try to like basically help every state to get that passed or? So we are, so we have, um, so the OMA has, you know, we have uh, obesity specialists and, uh, you know, and, and members located in every state. And, um, and we have actually there, um, there was like North Carolina had some restrictive rules around, um, around fentramine as an example. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so we were through like our advocacy arm and, uh, and, and different, you know, um, medical providers who were, um, who were part of our group were able to, um, at a state level, change that Ohio has some pretty restrictive guidelines there as well. And so there's work there, you know, to, um, to change that. And I think, um, you know, you know, Medi-Cal in California is like sort of a shining example of, you know, uh, of when something goes right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we hope that that is going to be an example for other states and other states are changing, uh, are are changing some of their, their policies as well. Um, Especially because of these MACE, like the, that's why the MACE outcomes are so Mm -hmm. important. It's because if something is going to make you healthier, um, insurance can't deny it. Um, And Mm -hmm. so that's why these studies matter Mm -hmm. because when you do them and you show without, you know, without doubt that, um, like this, this in, it improves people's lives, then it becomes harder for insurance to say, no, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Because I know my insurance personally doesn't cover bariatrics at all. Yeah. Which and, is, in, which is wild, Yeah, right? but they will cover everything and they will cover everything that goes wrong. If you yep. didn't have the surgery, yes. yep. that's for sure. That's yep. my biggest yeah. complaint. It's so <laughs> annoying because I'm like, you would pay out less money if you just helped us. If you just yeah. paid for bariatric surgery. Yes, I know it's a huge chunk, but what happens if I have a heart attack and go to the hospital? You'll cover that. Yeah, but yes, they're oh, 100% and that's insurance for you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That that's insurance for you. I um I did a um uh like I, I worked like a, a volunteer trip to India some years back. Wow. And I needed to get all these vac- vaccinations to work in in a hospital. They're like dengue fever and you know, stuff that you don't usually have to get if you're just like traveling to, you know, like I don't know, Bombay. Okay. And uh and so my insurance wouldn't cover it. And and so I called her, I was like, what do you mean? Like vaccinations are like basic care. Why are you not covering this? You're like, well, we only cover stuff you need in the US. And I was like, yeah, but I'm like a regular person who, you know, I'm volunteering and traveling somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I do need this coverage. They're like, sorry, sorry, it's out of pocket. And I said, okay, what if I can't afford it and I don't get vaccinated and I get sick and I end up with, you know, with, with, uh, fever and they're like, oh yeah, we'll cover that. And I was like, yeah, oh, don't see um, the, and, and nobody thought that was like ironic or funny. It was like total, like that, you know, I was like, you can't make this stuff up. No, you can't. You no. really cannot make this stuff up whatsoever. It's, it's such a backwards way of thinking about mm-hmm. it. And it, yeah, uh, I mean, it gets me so fired up. It makes me so angry. <laughs> like, Same. I am not like I'm a passionate person, but most of the time I'm very easygoing. I have a very mm-hmm. even temper. But things like this, just I just want to like march somewhere 
do something about something. it. I it makes me so angry. And it's like we just need the insurances to realize that they have a backwards idea of what care is. Yes. Is, oh, 100 percent. Is there anything that like as an individual or in the community that what we can do to help the situation? Like, do we yeah, need to be I'm, messaging, I'm, calling? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I would say that just as we do for, you know, for other, you know, uh, other, you know, rights that we want and we march and we do these things, honestly, there should be more of that going on. Um, there should be more letter writing, um, you know, to our state uh, legislature. There should be more letter writing to our national government. It's harder to Im impact change there. I get it, but Medicare is huge. Okay. Um, there, there should be more, um, you know, like complaining about this uh, to, to our um, to our healthcare systems, like yeah. to your large healthcare group. If you're, I don't know, I, I hate to do this because I was at Kaiser, but if you're a Kaiser patient and you're not getting the things you need, um, and and anti obesity medications are not formulary, mm -hmm. um, then you should complain about it. Go to mm -hmm. their customer service and say, hey. Um, you know, uh, this is, this isn't, this isn't right. And this isn't fair. I'd like to know why you're not covering this. And yeah. if enough people do that, it's just like if enough people call the, you know, your Senator for some particular issue, that's where, that's why gay rights, uh, you know, is, is coming along. That's why marijuana has been legalized this is because, um, people, uh, because people talked about it and complained about it because our government should be serving our needs. Um, and health insurance should be making us healthier, mm -hmm. um, not trying to block us at every, you know, at, at every, you know, like corner and fork in the well, road. I know what campaign yeah. we want to do. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it, so what you, what you guys are doing is, is like, is, is hugely impactful to go around the country and to talk about this and to elevate the issue. Um, and, you know, and to just state the obvious, you know, the obvious facts, like the majority of Americans have, have a, have a, have a health issue and, uh, or are going to have a health issue as a result of, of weight. And, uh, and we are pretending that it's not a problem. Yeah. And, and that's not okay. Well, I mean, that's what they always like to do. Yeah. It, it's not, if, <laughs> if we don't talk about it, it's not, not a, a problem. problem. And it yeah. is a very big problem. And I just want to give you a big thank you for all the work you're doing yes. because this is incredible. And I, it's something that I'm sure our entire community and follower and listeners feel very strongly about because it, it's affecting more people than we think it is. Yeah. So thank oh you. My gosh. Thank you for Absolutely. all your work. Yeah. Get involved with the OAC, the Obesity Action Coalition okay. um, and with other ways like that is, you know, that's sort of like the patient based, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, um, arm to um to impact to impact change uh in in this in this area and and it's the biggest health problem in the united states wow holy crap okay okay so people that are listening the audience that you're listening we are going to do some stuff we we are going <laughs> to yeah. be doing some stuff watch our instagram watch the stories watch whatever we mm -hmm. do because i already have wheels turning in my head of campaigns mm -hmm. that we need to do in every single state mm -hmm. and we need phone calls we need emails we need connections yeah. because i hope you guys blow up the internet with yeah, this if I we really make do, it bigger um, big enough that's more yeah let's yeah. fucking do it yeah so i'm on it <laughs> i am not i am not a political person i don't i don't get it most of the time but this is like making me. This is where you're going to learn. I know. Yeah. yeah. Mel's yeah. been yelling at me for years about the whole political side. <laughs> and so now she wins. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you so, so very much for talking about these issues and like really clearing up a lot of questions that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, because I know we've been doing this for three years and this is the first time like I feel like Mel's gotten what she wants and mm -hmm. I've gotten what I want out of one episode. Seriously, so yeah. much, so yeah. much. And I know that there's probably more questions to be had. Yes. So um, audience, email us, message us, yep. put it in the comments because yes. I mean, I'm sure Lydia wouldn't mind to come back on and yes. answer our followings. I, I would be more this. than happy to. Um, I, I just, uh, again, feel super passionate about this area and, uh, and about the, you know, the, the grassroots, you know, movement that you guys are, you know, are, are starting and going across the country doing and the advocacy that you do. Um, I think that, um, you know, when we have like a, a voice 
And that's, that's when, uh, that's when change happens. Yes. I love it. I agree. And I literally, when we started this, I just said like, I just, all I wanted to do was be the voice yeah. for other people. Yeah. So yeah. here we go. Here we go. You're our person. Yep. You're our person. We're so excited. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so, so very much. It's my for pleasure. Being thank on. you so much for having me on. Yeah. On and and everybody else, we love you and we will see you next, next time. time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>